Today I am traveling in second class on a Thai night train. The journey will take us from the northern city of Chiang Mai to the bustling capital of Bangkok. Come along as I share every part of the experience and explain why I don't recommend taking this train. The adventure begins on a sunny afternoon in Chiang Mai. Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. I am currently sitting in a lovely guest house in the city of Chiang Mai in northern Thailand and what I'm gonna do today is travel to Bangkok on a night train. The journey is gonna take around 13 hours starting in Chiang Mai at 5 p.m. and then arriving in Bangkok at 6 a.m. And yeah, the interesting thing about this train journey is that last year I took the day train. So I traveled from Bangkok to Chiang Mai in the other direction during the day. And yeah, this time I'm gonna try out the sleeper train. So yeah, let's head to the train station and find out what a night train in Thailand is like. First order of business, getting to the train station. Chiang Mai station is located about three kilometers east of the old city. To get there, I used a Grab taxi, which cost about $3, and the journey took 15 minutes. The station first opened in 1922, but it was destroyed during the Second World War and rebuilt in 1945. I have to say that I love the architecture and the retro charm. There are a few old locomotives and carriages on display outside. Inside, you'll find a staffed ticket office, a few shops selling snacks, and a small waiting area. If you're sensitive to heat, this might not be the best place to wait, because the entire area is open air, meaning that there is no air conditioning. Besides, there is not much to do here, so if you arrive a bit too early, like I did, here is a top tip. Cross the street and walk about 200 meters to the left, where you'll find the super stylish Baristro coffee shop. Back at the station, it is now time to board the night train to Bangkok. This is the SRT Special Express 14, departing at 5 p.m. The distance between Chiang Mai and Bangkok is around 750 kilometers, and the journey should take 13 hours. As such, the night train is two hours slower than the day train, which I took last year, but more on that later. And here we are, this is what second class looks like. The carriages are in a 1 plus 1 configuration during the day, but at night, every set of two seats will become a lower bunk and the attendants will open the top bunks, which are now hidden. Wait a minute, this doesn't look so bad. So what's your issue with this train, you might be wondering. Rest assured, we'll get to that. During the day, these seats are super comfortable and there are plugs as well as plenty of luggage storage. The train doesn't have Wi-Fi though, and the windows do not open. The AC was blasting throughout the entire journey, so bring a sweater. The loo was reasonably clean, and there are two sinks in every carriage. I also got a quick glance at first class, which has compartments with two bunk beds. I actually wanted to get one of these, but they were sold out when I booked my ticket five days before departure. So if you want to travel in first class, you have to book a few weeks in advance. We departed 10 minutes behind schedule and we're now heading south toward Bangkok. The carriages that you see in this video are the older second class AC wagons. The newer ones look like this. Not a huge difference, but the newer carriages have built-in tables. Our train is pulled by a General Electric loco that can do 100 km an hour. The most scenic landscapes on this journey are found just outside of Chiang Mai. The windows were extremely dirty, but the lush greenery still looked fantastic at sunset. And here's the first reason why I don't recommend taking this train. At night, you don't really get to see much. What I enjoyed most on my day train journey were the landscapes. 
The jungle scenery and small villages are epic, but if you take this particular train, you will miss most of that, because the sun goes down at 6pm. You do get to see a little bit, before dusk or dawn respectively, but it is very limited compared to what the day train offers. Half an hour after departure, the train attendant came and took my order for dinner. This train does have a restaurant car, but you can also dine at your seat. To my surprise, meals weren't included in the ticket price. I don't know if the train company changed something, but last year I got one full meal as well as plenty of snacks and drinks for free when I took the day train. This year everything was extra. Do you guys know if that is also the case for the day train now? If you do, please enlighten me in the comments down below. The food came around one hour later and it was okay. Nothing groundbreaking, but perfectly fine for a train meal. At 180 baht, it was pretty expensive though. Yes, in euros or dollars, this might not sound like much, but you can get a better meal for half the price in any normal Chiang Mai restaurant. That's why I think that it is quite pricey for Thailand. Anyways, after dinner, the friendly train attendant comes over and makes your bed. Great service there. Fresh linen and a warm blanket are provided and you're ready to lie down. I ended up getting a top bunk because there were no lower bunks available when I booked. And yeah, the bed itself is really comfortable and spacious. As long as you aren't taller than 1 meter 90, you should be fine here. So, let's close the curtains and try to doze off. Unfortunately, this is where the whole experience completely falls apart. The bed itself might be comfortable, but the train shakes like hell throughout the entire journey. I did not manage to get any meaningful sleep. I do want to clarify that I generally don't have trouble sleeping on trains. I don't mind a little bit of rocking, we are on a moving train after all, but on this one you are literally thrown around for 13 hours. And this won't be any different in first class. So yeah, the ride is just terrible. Another problem is that they never turn the lights off. My camera doesn't really do it justice, but the curtains actually do a pretty poor job of blocking out the light. So bring an eye mask. And that is pretty much that. If this train had a better ride, you could probably get some decent sleep on it, but I could not. I gave up at around 4 in the morning and returned to a seating position. At this point, I also realized that we had racked up a 1 hour delay. As such, 13 hours just became 14, not great. As we are trundling into Bangkok, let's get to the conclusions. This train is pretty good as long as you are in a seating position. But as a sleeper train, the ride just makes it unbearable. But some of you might think, I don't care. It's a simple and cheap way to get from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. And yes, you might be right. But the main reason why I don't recommend the night train is the following. There are so many better options to travel between Bangkok and Chiang Mai. The day train is cheaper, faster and you'll see a lot more of the beautiful country that is Thailand. If you don't have a lot of luggage, you can also find very cheap flights on this route. And finally, if you want to save money on accommodation by traveling during the night, you can also get a very comfortable and cheap night bus. These will also be faster. And yeah, that leaves very little space for the very slow night train. I paid 768 Thai baht for my second class upper bunk. Not expensive, but still quite a bit more than the day train, which cost me 638. Keep in mind that the latter also included food and drinks. And that is it for today. Let me know what you guys think. Have you taken this train before? And if not, would you? Thanks very much for coming along and see you again next week. Goodbye.